Good afternoon, Facebook friends. This is part six of Prayer Time with Brother Jed. And we've been studying the prayer of faith and Jesus' ministry in healing the sick, cleansing the leper, opening up blind eyes, making the dumb to speak, the lame to walk, the wonderful miracles that Jesus did. Oftentimes students will challenge me on campus. How come we don't see the miracles today that uh, we see in the Bible? And of course, I think this is something that all of us as Christians, not just skeptics or unbelievers or atheists or have wondered, but uh, we wonder the same. But we need to learn to walk by faith. We need to learn to have faith in God or God's kind of faith. Most Christians have faith. Of course, they have to have faith in order to be saved. And, and, uh, they get saved by faith, and and that's about the extent of their faith, just for salvation, receiving the forgiveness of sins and the gift of eternal life. And then they soon begin to get involved in some of the arguments and controversies in the church. And what you read on Facebook, uh, what role does works have to play in our salvation, and if anything, and and. Um, some argue there has to be works included or faith will produce works and others say works have nothing whatsoever to do with it. They get involved in these uh, arguments, but they would never really learn to walk by faith. Trust in God for every, in every aspect of our life, not just when we die and go to heaven or not just to have our, our sins forgiven, but to trust in God for keeping good health, to trust in God for uh, our financial needs, for trusting in God when in, in, in the workplace, in our uh, employment, uh, learning this walk of faith. And unfortunately, there's not a lot of teaching on that often in our churches today. We get too much involved in these uh, uh, controversies, and it's not just in the churches. The same happens... Uh, uh, over uh, Facebook and over other uh, social media as well. We've been especially looking at uh, James, chapter 5 and verse 13. It says, Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. So when we have afflictions, when we're going through sufferings, trials, tests, tribulations, We've got to pray. Is any merry? Let them sing psalms. Is any sick among you? Let them call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. So when you're sick, do you call the elders of the church? Or is there a time in your church service when the Elders may line up at the altar and invite people forward that are sick and they're anointed with oil. It should be happening. We're really walking by faith. But uh, typically, uh, of course, the first thing that comes to even the Christian's mind if he gets sick is, uh, I need some medication. I need a prescription. I, I uh, need uh, uh, to visit the doctor. I, I need to go to the emergency room. Well, not saying you shouldn't do those things or they can't be helpful, but the first thing you should do is think about calling the elders of the church. First of all, praying yourself. If you're not getting anywhere, if you're not getting a change or improvement in your situation, call for the elders of the church. Let them anoint you with oil. In the name of the Lord, of course. In the name of the Lord is Jesus. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. 
and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. The prayer of faith shall save the sick, the sick in soul and the sick in body. It's the prayer of faith that will make the difference. Well, what is this prayer of faith? That's what we've been studying. And to get an idea of the prayer of faith, let's go to Matthew 21. In verse 18. Now, in the morning, as Jesus returned into the city, he was hungry. And he saw a fig tree in the way, and he came to it and found nothing thereon but leaves only, and he said unto it, Let no fruit grow on thee henceforth forever. And presently the fig tree withered away. That fig tree responded to Jesus' command. He was hungry. We expect a fig tree to produce figs, to produce fruit. And when we're not producing fruit as Christians, we can expect to be falling under the curse ourselves. As we're producing fruit, God wants to bless us, wants to bless us so we can be even more productive and even more fruitful. Now, is he talking about the fruit of the Spirit? Or is he talking about the fruit of bringing souls into the kingdom? Well, either one can apply here. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, kindness, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Temperance would be self-control. Are you manifesting the fruit of the Spirit? If you're a Christian, you will be. You're producing figs, and you're under God's blessing. But if you're not manifesting the fruit of the Spirit, that's an indication you're already spiritually dead, or at least rotten, rotting, and about to die, and you'll put yourself under the curse. In verse 20, And when the disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, How soon is the fig tree withered away? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily, or truly, I say unto you, If you have faith and doubt not, faith, 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 we're going to have faith. And where there's faith, you don't doubt. The devil will try to torment you with doubts. But we don't need to listen to the doubters. We don't need to listen to the men of faith. And there's a lot of doubt today when it comes to Jesus, application of Jesus' ministry to healing to our generation. Or, or deliverance from uh, uh, demonic influence and or control. A lot of doubt about that ministry. Most churches, they don't even touch it. We need to have faith and doubt not. Verily I say unto you, if you have faith and doubt not, ye shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree, but also if you say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done. If you have faith. He says, you'll do these things. You'll be able to speak to the fig tree. You'll be able to speak to the mountain. And this would be the trials, the tribulations, the tests that come our way, the attacks from Satan, whatever it might be. The normal trials any Christian, any believer is going to go through. We can speak to these situations. We can speak to the trouble and command it to go, to die in the name of Jesus. 
and we need to exercise this authority as believers. Hello, John. Welcome again today. Jubal, Moses, glad you're watching also. In all things, whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive. Is that true or not? Whatever we ask in prayer, we'll receive if we believe. And if we're not receiving, that's an indication we're not believing. Oh, we might still be blaming God for salvation. We still might acknowledge that he's the son of God. He's God incarnate, God manifested in the flesh. We may still have the assurance he's coming again. But can we believe God to help us in our present difficulty, in our present situation? According to the scriptures, we can. That's what he taught his disciples. And aren't we his disciples, or should be, or are we just pew sitters? So that's the prayer of faith. The prayer of faith is, is a prayer that believes that you're going to receive what you ask for. And ideally, we want to see, receive it in the here and now. Now, I grant you, sometimes we may have to wait and may not be God's timing, but typically, as I read the, the scriptures and the healing ministry of Jesus, his timing was the here and the now. Not much later, but in the here and the now. Sooner or later, yeah, we're all going to be healed if we're believers. We're going to leave this body and be in the presence of the Lord and then the day is coming when we'll have uh, the resurrection of the body. We'll get on new and glorified bodies. Surely, I know we're all going to be healed in that day. But uh, we want God to move in the present day, to manifest his power in the here and the now. And the scriptures tell us how to do that. James is telling us how to do that, how to pray the prayer of faith. Well, you got to believe. And of course, studying the word of God as I'm bringing forth this teaching to you on prayer. This is the sixth session. Uh, it has encouraged me. And I hope it, in, it is encouraging you. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So I'm speaking it. I'm hearing it, not just reading it, not just visualizing it, but I'm hearing it. And when we visualize it and hear it, that will increase our faith. So that's why we need to stay in the Word. That's why I encourage you to join me in our prayer time together. All right, let's go to Matthew 9. Matthew 9, verse 18. Remember this. According to Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Just as he healed in his earthly ministry, he's the same as he sits at the right hand of the Father. He still wants to bring healing to us today. The same yesterday, today, and forever. We had great healing ministries. Uh, the healing revival began to arise in the United States after World War II. Of course, epitomized finally by the ministry of Oral Roberts. Some of these great healing evangelists, most of them all have passed from the scene. We, we still have, have some uh, out there emphasizing healing in their ministry. You know their names. If I name their names, some of you would be offended. Call them false prophets or whatever. So maybe I will not name their names. Maybe I will name them anyway. Probably will before long. So I don't mock people that are trying to exercise faith and, and, and heal the sick. 
and lay hands on the sick and have great healing crusades. I'm all for them. They say, well, they're putting on a show. Well, Jesus put on somewhat of a show, did he not? We want to make our ministries uh, interesting to people. Jesus, I think, had the, a sense of the theatrical, if you will. When I'm preaching out on campus, I like to uh, use all the arts in, in conveying my message. don't want to be boring. So yes, I use drama, use theater. Okay, uh, Matthew 9, verse 18. I need to get some light in here. It's a dark, dreary day uh, here in uh, uh, Terre Haute, Indiana today. Got the rain, not the sun. It's a little bit of typical uh, April day. April showers, though, brings those May flowers, doesn't it? All right. Well, Jesus spake these things unto them. He was a preacher. Jesus was a preacher. But he was also a teacher. And he was also a healer. So I want to, I'm part of this healing ministry of Jesus. So I hope you would go to a church that believes in his healing ministry. But well, Jesus spake these things unto them. Behold, there came a certain ruler and worshipped him. Worshipped him. To worship him means to account su supreme worth to him. Worshipped him. Saying, my daughter is even now dead. But come and lay hands upon her and she shall live. Now that's faith. And typically you'll find Jesus when he healed people. He healed people that already had demonstrated some faith. Hello, Frank. Sunny in Oregon. Well, that's unusual. Usually it's raining in Oregon. All right. Emmanuel, glad to have you with us today to see you're watching as well. Frank's an old friend uh, from um, Victory Chapel in, um, in, in the state of Oregon, Portland. Uh, Victory World Outreach Church. Preached there many times uh, over the years. And uh, unfortunately, I don't believe that the work is going any longer. It's going under a different ministry maybe now. Not sure about that. All right. Frank's been out to campus with me. I've stayed in his home. It's been a real blessing to the ministry. So, so this ruler, certain ruler, had faith. Was he a Jewish ruler or somehow a Roman ruler? I don't know that we're told. But anyway, he had faith. My daughter's dead. But come and lay hands on her and she shall live. And Jesus arose and followed him, and so did his disciples. And behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood, twelve years, came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. In other accounts, it says this woman had suffered much from the physicians and had spent a lot of money and the physicians, the uh, health care professionals could not help her. But she saw her opportunity to get help from Jesus, the great physician, the healer. And she thought, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be healed. She'd had this infirmity for 12 years, an issue of blood. Blood. 
I can just but touch the hem of his garment. If you reach down, if you touch the hem of Jesus' garment. For she said within herself. Now, she did not verbalize this. She said within herself, she was thinking, if I can just but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be whole. But Jesus turned him about, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. And the woman was made whole from that very hour. Jesus responds to faith. In other accounts, it says Jesus recognized virtue went out of him. And he turned around and says, who's touched me? Who's touched me? But the throngs, the multitudes were following him. And I would imagine maybe his disciples said, what are you talking about, Lord? A lot of people have been touching you. But they don't touch with faith. They still touch in unbelief. This woman touched in faith, touched the hem of his garment. And was made whole that hour. Within, the, within an hour, she was made whole. Isn't that wonderful? Now faith. Hebrews 11 is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. We want to bring our faith into operation in the here and the now. Not just in terms of going to heaven when we die. Or, or some future blessing or future uh, answer to prayer. So I suppose this um, ruler, I mean, Jarius is, uh, uh, is the ruler, and um, I suppose he's getting kind of concerned. You know, Jesus is preoccupied with this woman. She's getting his attention, and I need to have my daughter's light brought back. We don't know. We're not told. We just speculate. And when... Jesus came into the ruler's house. He saw the minstrels and the people making noise. Lamenting over this woman, this young girl, who's uh, dead. They're lamenting, wailing, weeping. And when Jesus came into the ruler's house, he saw the minstrels and the people making noise. And he said unto them, give place, give me some room here. Clear this room out. I want everybody out. All the mourners out. All the musical instruments out. Oh, we're, we're convinced we need to have our musical instruments. We need to have our microphones. We need to have our sound equipment. Jesus didn't care about any of that. You know, we can get dependent. It's nice to have the music. and We can get dependent on the sound equipment. You know, when I go into a church, they always want to hook me up with a microphone. Don't really need one. My, I've learned to project my voice. But uh, I noticed a lot of ministers, seems like they have to have that microphone in hand. And if I'm going to have a mic, I said, give me a lapel mic. I like to have my hands free. We're to minister with our hands. I don't want a mic in one hand. Like my hands free. So a lot of churches they've been going to for years, they know that. And some of them uh, still don't have, uh, uh, they only have mics. They don't have uh, uh, what the cordless uh, uh, type mics. And Jesus said, the maid is not dead. She's asleep. <laughs> they, they laugh.
left him to scorn. What do you mean she's asleep? She's dead. Dead. Jesus said, no, get out of here. Get this music out of here. She's asleep. They laughed him to scorn. And when we start exercising true biblical faith, people will laugh at us, and people will mock us. I don't mock other people's prayers. No, they not, might not be praying. Well, some were probably saying they're under a curse or they wouldn't be blind. And when Jesus was come into the house, the blind men came with him, or came to him. They were persistent. And Jesus saith unto them, Do you believe I'm able to do this? Do you believe I'm able to restore your sight? They, apparently, they did not answer. Here it doesn't say they answered. But Jesus touched their eyes. The touch. If you've been touched by the Lord, you just need a touch. The woman touched the hem of his garment. Here he touched these blind men. He touched their eyes. And said... According to your faith, be it unto you. According to your faith, be it unto you. So basically, we can get what we believe for. If it's compatible with the Word of God, if it's compatible with Scriptures, And don't we believe that God wants to heal us? Peter sums up the ministry of Jesus when he went to preach to Cornelius' house in Acts chapter 10, in verse 38. He tells Cornelius, the Gentile, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power and went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. So these blind men were healed. Notice their persistence. Have mercy on me. Thou son of David, have mercy upon me. They were praying effectually. They were praying fervently. They were pray praying earnestly. And Jesus touched them. According to your faith, so be it unto you. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Have faith in God. You can't please him without faith. Perhaps nothing impresses him more than faith. Faith is trusting in God. Believing you will receive when you ask. And their eyes were open, and Jesus straightly charged them, saying, See that no man know it. Strange thing for Jesus to say. Don't let anybody know this. Well, did Jesus really think they were going to keep it to themselves? I mean, these people have been lying who knows how long, maybe all their life, these two men. So it was noised abroad. I mean, there were other people in the house. So it was going to be noised abroad. It says, when they departed, they spread abroad his fame in all that country. Jesus was becoming famous. 
and the more famous he became, the more the religious leaders, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the priests, the more they resented him because he was getting the attention of the people and they were no longer getting the attention of the people. Justina, daughter Justina, glad to see you're watching. Richard Thomas is watching. Thank you for tuning in. And as they went out, behold, they brought to him a dumb man possessed with the devil. I heard the expression deaf and dumb. Dumb man is one who can't talk, can't speak. Tongue tied. He was possessed with the devil. And when the devil was cast out, the dumb spake, and the multitudes marveled. <laughs> the blind see, the deaf hear, the lame walk, the dead are raised. the response to the Pharisees, the religious leaders, did they rejoice? No. He cast out devils through the prince of the devils. They were accusing him of doing these miraculous works by the power of Satan. It wasn't by the power of Satan, it was by the power of God. It says in verse 35, And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom. The gospel of the kingdom. And healing every sickness and every disease among the people. He healed them all. Look at that. And remember Jesus said, the works that I do shall you do also in greater works than these shall you do because I go on to my Father. Jesus commissioned his disciples to go forth and heal the sick, to tread upon serpents and upon scorpions. He said, shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils. They shall speak in new tongues. They shall lay hands on the sick and the sick shall recover. And so we see throughout the book of Acts this ministry continuing after Jesus goes to the right hand of the Father. We're the church of the living God. Christ is in us. And we need to demonstrate to the world the power of Christ. It takes a lot of faith to put ourselves on the line. And when I'm on campus, you know, students, generally speaking, are pretty healthy. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, you don't meet too many, you know, blind people. Occasionally you see one around. Or, and, uh, but they don't, they're not coming asking for healing. You see a few lame occasionally. But we need to have this sort of power if we're going to have revival. And uh, that's what men like Gore Roberts saw, and people made fun of him, and he ended up trying to build a city of faith, combining uh, modern medicine with, with the healing touch of, of uh, Jesus. Ultimately, he could not keep that going, he had a lot of opposition. But I thought it was a worthy effort uh, that he made, so I'm not going to make fun of the man. Built a great university, or Roberts University. This man never went to college, or Roberts. So he was the greatest healing evangelist of the 20th century. Just as influential, in some respects, maybe even more influential than Billy Graham himself. He had a lot of 
critics. The more you step out in faith, the more critics you can have. And if these religious leaders were moved by envy and jealousy, we need to make sure in our criticism we're not motivated by envy and, and, uh, and jealousy. So there you have it, folks. That's the teaching for today. We'll be continuing this subject of faith and prayer time with Brother Jed. Uh, do we have any uh, prayer requests today? Begin to write them all, before, write them down and tell me about them before we go off the air. Hallelujah. We believe God for healing. I just speak healing right now in the name of Jesus. I speak healing to your eyes. I speak healing to that tumor. I cast it out in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, shut up, Loose that tongue. Be free from the devil. Remember, if any of you are afflicted, you pray. I hope my teaching today has been able to increase your faith. You don't have to have me pray for you. It's best to really go to the elders of your church who know your situation and know you. And you know, Bible us say, confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed. So if we have sin in our life, that can be a hindrance to healing. We need to pray. If we're not manifesting the fruit of the Spirit, we put ourselves under the curse. Is the fruit of the Spirit ripening in your life? Or is it rotten? Have you fallen back into lukewarmness and no longer have hot for God like you once were? Well, that can bring us under the curse. So basically it all gets back to our lack of faith. We need to have the faith of God. Have, have faith in God. That's what we're exhorted. That's what Jesus constantly exhorted. To have faith in God. Amen. Well, I've enjoyed this today. If you people aren't getting anything out of it, Brother Jed is. I am. Uh, I enjoy it. It's not exactly the campus ministry. I like that face-to-face, -face, person to person. And and I'll have to admit, my ministry somewhat uh, excels in the midst of conflict, in the midst of the battle. It seems like God pours out more of his spirit upon me. And I think you people are tuning in and you're waving and you're friends and... and uh, I'm looking forward to the day that we can get back out there on campus. America will open up again. I call this country to open up. That the people will rise up and go to work. Open up. It's time to put our hands to the plow and get America to work again. I think that's the best medication we can have for this virus. Get back to work. You know, when you're not working, you begin, oh, I got a headache. Could that be a coronavirus? I've got a little runny nose. Is that the coronavirus? And we can get hurt. You're fearful and, and so on. But, you know, when you're working, you don't have time to think about a runny nose or a cough or uh or, or, or whatever. You're too busy to worry about those things. So let's get back to work. America, get back to work.
Churches open up across this land. We're going to meet. And we're going to gather together and worship God in spirit. True. Use a little ingenuity like some are. Meeting cars if you have to. Drive-ins. So many churches have a big sanctuary. You can get off in your little group and, and uh, have, have group meetings in the church if nothing else. Sign different people to come up with a sermon. Got big buildings, got Sunday school rooms. You can divide yourself up. You look, you use some ingenuity. Let's get back to worshiping God. In spirit and in truth. Well, live streaming. That's what I'm doing. That's a place for that. I'm you know, probably a lot of people are going to keep up this live streaming. That'll be a, that'll be a good thing. So good's going to come out of all this. All things work together for good for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. So Justina, glad to have you with us. I hope Erilyn, I hope she's listening in. Erilyn is the granddaughter. All right. God bless you. Bye-bye.